welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm continuing with my Ryzen 3 2200G PC build. In the last video I finished hardware construction, we ended up with a working computer, but it didn't have an operating system on it. And so in this video I'm going to be installing Windows, doing some configuration and running some performance tests. After that, I'll also be installing Linux Mint, including showing you how to set up a dual boot. But I've decided to do the Linux install and the dual boot configuration in next week's video to stop this video becoming very long indeed. Right, just before we install an operating system on this PC, we'll take a quick journey into its BIOS. So we'll turn it on and press F2 and we'll soon arrive in the BIOS as you can see and like all modern motherboards our system here has a UEFI rather than a legacy BIOS. And if you want to know what all this means I'll soon be making a whole video all about BIOS and UEFI and their settings so here I'm just going to cover some essentials. Now in this particular BIOS, which is the one we get with this particular motherboard, your BIOS will look different if you're using a motherboard from a different manufacturer. In this BIOS we have two possible ways to look at things. We can use what's called the classic view, which is what we're in now, which has got lots and lots of sub-menus and settings we can change. Or we can use what's called easy mode, which I can select down there. And in fact you can go back and forth between uh, classic mode and easy mode just pressing the, the F2 key. But easy mode shows us all we need right now. And with a new PC it's just a good idea to quickly check. It's picked up the right processor, it has. It's picked up our storage or SSD, it has. We can see our CPU fan is working okay, it's spinning clearly there. We can see our first system fan, the fan in the back of the case is working, that's fine as well. And the second system fan isn't working because we haven't got one plugged in. It's also picked up we've got 8GB of RAM in two 4GB modules, that is correct. But the speed of the memory here is wrong. Because you might remember in this PC we've fitted a 2400 MHz modules. So it should be running at 2400 MHz here, not about 2133. So what is going on? Well, the answer is we need to tell our motherboard if we've got RAM that runs faster than 2133 MHz using a system called XMP or Extreme Memory Profiles. And basically, if you enable Extreme Memory Profiles, the motherboard communicates with the memory and picks up the right settings to run it at its proper speed. So all we've got to do is to go down here to XMP Disabled, click on it, it'll say XMP Profile 1, and all we've got to do now is to click on the Save and Exit, and uh, Save and Exit Setup. There we are. I must remember to uh, press F2 to come back into the BIOS. And uh, here we are back again, I'll press F2 to go back into uh, Easy Mode, and yes, you can see we're now running it on memory at a 2400 MHz, so all is okay. So if you're fitting a PC with DDR4 RAM that runs at more than 2133 MHz, do make sure you enable XMP profiles or you won't get the full speed out of your memory. Anyway, this is now all set up absolutely fine for our PC here. So all I have to do is to go to a save and exit and we're going to go in search of Microsoft Windows. To install Windows 10 on our new PC, we need to have a bootable USB drive with the Windows install files on it. And we can either purchase a USB drive with those files on, for example directly from the Microsoft Store as you're seeing here, or we can go to this Microsoft site where we can download the files to create a USB drive with Windows install files on it, or indeed we can actually download a tool which will create such a drive directly for us. And as you can see this can be used either to upgrade an existing PC or to install Windows on a, on a new PC, a different PC, which is what we're going to be doing. Now, I point out that during or after your installation of Windows, you'll need to activate it with a license key. And there's various ways you can get one of those. You can buy it directly from Microsoft, and you can see that the current price for that for Windows 10 Home is about £120 or $120. Although if you go to say eBay or Amazon, you'll find you can purchase Windows 10 keys from about sort of three or four dollars upwards. And I'll have to leave it to you to decide where best you want to get hold of your Windows 10 key. So for now we will download the, the tool, and I'll click on that there, and uh, we'll save that here. It's only a small file, it won't take very long, so I'll let that just uh, continue through. And uh, there we are, and if I just run that up, there we are, we want to use it, Microsoft, yes we do. 
And uh, this might be a bit scary because clearly you're running this on a computer which is not the one we're going to install Windows on, but do not fear, you're not going to mess up the PC you're using to download these files. But it will give you this getting a few things ready message. And now here we clearly need to accept the license. And now it's asking, what do we want to do? We don't want to upgrade this existing PC. We want to create installation media for another PC. So we'll do that and select next. And uh, it's now picked up uh, various settings from the PC we're currently on. For me here, these are fine. Although do make sure the architecture is set to 64-bit. If it says 32-bit here, change it to 64-bit as we're installing Windows on a new PC. So for now, again, on here, we can click next. And uh, we want to create a USB flash drive. So I'll uh, take the USB flash drive I've got to here. This is a SanDisk drive. It needs to be at least eight gigabytes. We'll uh, plug it in. There we are. And uh, we'll go uh, next. And uh, that's fine. And uh, next again. And it's now once again, getting a few things ready. And uh, part of this is now downloading Windows 10, which will clearly take a significant time. So I'll uh, let this progress through and come back to you when it's finished. And here we are, the download is almost complete. It's taken just over an hour on my system. This now seems to be verifying the download. And now it's going to move on to create our Windows 10 installation media. And uh, here we are, it's just about finished off. There we are, our flash drive is ready. So we've now got a USB drive we can use to install Windows on our Ryzen PC. Now, with our USB drive inserted into our PC, we can turn it on and begin to install Windows. And here we are, the Windows install process has begun. So I'll just set my locality information. And uh, there we are, we'll click on next. And uh, nice and straightforwardly, we will install now. And this should be a fairly straightforward process. And we'll next get to uh, this screen. And we don't yet have a product key, so I'll click I don't have a product key. Remember, we can activate Windows later. And uh, from here, I'm going to select the uh, version of Windows I want, which is going to be Windows 10 Home, and we will obviously do Next. And uh, we have to accept the license agreement. That's uh, fairly reasonable. And uh, Custom is clearly going to be what we're doing, because this is a brand new install. We've got a clean drive to install on. We just obviously select that drive. There's no other options. That's fine. Next on that. And it is now copying files. And clearly, this is going to be a rather long process, so we'll speed through until something exciting happens. And uh, clearly, we've got to the end of a, a process there, which is nice and quick, about six minutes at this point in time in the real world. I could press restart now, couldn't I? But I'll let Windows do its own thing. And it's obviously starting up again. And uh, here we are, looking a little bit more uh, like we're about to arrive in an operating system. Uh, less than nine minutes in, it really is amazing how rapidly you can install Windows on a modern PC from USB driver uh, onto an SSD. So a few uh, things to uh, input here. Yes, I'm in the UK. Uh, my keyboard layout should also be obviously UK. I'll flick through any more of these. And now we've got to the exciting part when Microsoft wants us to create an account. And I'm not going to do that. And we can't click next because it won't be happy, but we can go for an offline account. No, I really don't want to sign with Microsoft. I don't need to have a Microsoft account. Thank you very much. You might, of course, want to do that. And I think the name I'll use will be a EC, explaining computers. And we'll give it a password. It forces us to have security questions, so I'll just uh, skip through these. And uh, hopefully, Microsoft will now let us to get on with things. Do I want Cortana? No. Do I want more devices across history? No. There'll be lots of things here we could activate if we wish to. I'm just going to run through all these rapidly. These things are about how much data we send Microsoft, which is going to be a minimum possible. Whoa, and here we are with a picture of uh, things in the news. Do we want to be discoverable all on uh, networks? We'll say yes. And uh, here we are in Windows. In uh, under 15 minutes, well under 15 minutes, we've booted into Windows. Now, things aren't all sorted out yet. I need to sort out things like resolutions. But what I'm going to do initially is just to leave Windows here, 
Picking up updates, I can see there's network activity if I look at the back of the machine in terms of a network port there. So lots of data is coming in as it's picking up updates and stuff. So we'll let Windows sort itself out and I'll come back to you in a minute. Well, that was a lot more than a minute because since I saw you last, Windows has installed lots of different updates. There have been various restarts. And my advice to you after install Windows is to get to the point where you can go to the menu, you can go to a settings and go to update and security, and you can uh, click on a check for updates and there's nothing left to update, which hopefully will be the case here. If we're lucky, yes, we're all up to date. And while we're here in settings, it's worth looking at activation. Windows is not activated yet. And to activate Windows, we can either go to the store and purchase a key from Microsoft and activate things here, or as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, buy a product key elsewhere and uh, enter it in here to activate Windows. Now, I'm not going to activate Windows just now because this is a temporary install, so I'm not going to activate a temporary install, but when you have activated Windows, it'll look something like this. So anyway, let's come out of uh, that and we'll go to uh, this PC. You'll see that everything is looking as it should there with our new install. And uh, if we particularly go and um, right click this PC, which is probably what I should have done a second ago, Anyway, you can see that uh, it's picked up our correct processor, the memory's there, etc. Everything looks happy. And if we click on Device Manager, uh, you'll see that, again, things are pretty happy here. Windows these days does a pretty good job of picking up drivers and things just when you've installed Windows and it can go and find things online. And even, for example, under Display Adapters here, it's picked up our uh, AMD Radeon Vega 8 graphics with the Ryzen 3 2200G. So that's pretty good. This said, there are almost certainly better drivers we can find online for our system. If you have a DVD on your system, you might want to use the disk that came with a motherboard to install drivers, but the latest drivers will always be found online. And if we go to the web, there's two ways we could potentially install drivers on this board. One is we could use what's called the Gigabyte App Center. All motherboard manufacturers have a piece of software you can download and install in your system, which will look for drivers, install various uh, other applications and things and keep it all up to date. I don't particularly like using these. You can get a lot of a bloatware on your system you don't really want with these things running. They can hog resources. So I would much rather just install particular uh, drivers. But if you're new to all this, you want a simple solution, you could use something like the App Center. But the other way we can do drivers and get hold of them is to go to the web page for the uh, motherboard we particularly got. Here it's a Gigabyte B450M Gaming. And if we go to support, it'll bring up uh, downloads. And if we pick up a driver OS, which is going to be Windows 1064 bit, it'll show us the various drivers we can have to install. So we don't need all the files here because these are often duplicate files and uh, well, at least files from different dates. So the most recent, say, HD audio driver is here. I'll just uh, download that and we'll uh, save that. And uh, if we keep going down, there'll be a chipset driver, a driver for all of the uh, basic parts of the motherboard, all the input output stuff, the critical stuff. That's absolutely critical. This is the first one we'll install. We'll uh, download that as well and uh, save that. And uh, also down here, there'll be a driver for a network, a LAN driver, Shall I take the latest LAN driver? Probably, I'm not gonna bother with a the gaming thing there, but I'll take the Realtek LAN driver and uh, download that as well. And uh, finally down here, I think these are just RAID drivers. I'm not using RAID, only one drive in this system, so it won't need that. So I'll let all these things continue to download. And uh, there we are, things now all complete. We can open up the uh, folder where these files are, get rid of uh, that. Uh, yes, we want to close all tabs. Don't you just hate computers trying to be clever? We've got two copies of it now, dearie me. Uh, one will do, won't it? And um, we will just extract uh, all these files. And uh, as you can see, we've now got all the files extracted. So we'll open up the chipset drivers. Most important ones to do first. Somewhere in here, hopefully there is a setup. There is. And if we click on setup, we can now hopefully uh, make all that happen. So uh, this again will just be a process of letting it all run through. Yes, we'll accept and uh, install. And for once, I think I'll do an express install. I'm going to trust uh, AMD. And there we are, the Radeon software has been installed. So uh, we will do a restart as it uh, requests. And that all seems to be good. So we're now gonna go back and do the others. 
which will be in download still. We've got the uh, audio driver there, which we will uh, again install. There must be a, a setup somewhere here. Where has it gone? Setup. Similar kind of process. No point in you watching me going through all of these, so I will speed through these last two driver installs for audio and the LAN, and then all of the drivers required will be installed on this PC. Right, having done lots and lots of installations and configurations, I thought we should reward ourselves by running some performance tests. And so here we are back in Windows running a Passmark 9. But uh, just before we execute this, I thought I'd show you that since we installed all the right drivers in Windows, we can now access uh, a nice little uh, graphical control panel for our uh, Radeon Vega 8 graphics, which for some reason shows us things like that, even though in the preferences banner adverts are turned off. I don't quite understand that. But uh, you've clearly got here lots of options for setting up uh, your display and setting up a system and playing with all the graphical configurations to your heart's content. Anyway, let's uh, kick off a pass mark, see what it makes of this uh, system, what evaluation it gives us. This will take a while to work through, so let's uh, speed on until we hit some of the more interesting graphical tests. And uh, here we are in the first of the uh, 3D graphics test, what I call the, the planes test. Running at a slightly strange resolution for us here, but uh, an impressive result, I think, there, doing a well over 90 frames a second it was just a second ago. Obviously it goes up and down as the, the action changes, but uh, that's uh, pretty good. I'm rather impressed with the uh, internal graphics giving us that kind of a performance on uh, this test. And uh, here we are now uh, spinning around floating islands, a much uh, tougher test, but uh, still doesn't look bad compared to how you see this on, uh, on many systems. This is still very impressive from the uh, uh, internal graphics, I think. Okay, it's dropped to about 14 frames a second there, just because I've said that. But uh, as we move out of it, this is this is pretty good. And uh, yes, I'm 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 still impressed with this. And we get our uh, first foray into uh, outer space, what I call the floating jellyfish test, which uh, seems to be going okay. But uh, the test I'm really looking forward to is the one that follows this, which I think is the technically the DirectX 12 test. And uh, talking of which, here we are in that test, what I call a spaceship test as well. And this is looking pretty good. It's getting uh, over 20 frames a second. This is a, a tough test for internal graphics, but it's still looking pretty good, I think. Yes, I'm, I expected the, the Ryzen 3 2200G to have a pretty good performance from its uh, internal uh, graphics, its onboard GPU, but this is really probably better than I anticipated. That was, that was rather impressive. And uh, there we are, we have a final result, a final pass mark rating of a 3257, which I think is a pretty good for a budget PC which was built in, what, January 2019 for about £336 or $354. And uh, I won't submit those results online just yet, but they are, uh, I think, pretty good. I've also got some baselines loaded in here you may find interesting if you follow this channel. That is the, the baseline of this PC there compared to the i3-4300T I built about four years ago. But clearly this one is, is massively faster. And also there we've got a baseline for the Latte Panda Alpha, which as you can see this is a significantly faster than the, the Latte Panda Alpha. That might make some of you smile. Anyway, there we are. We've done some performance ratings for our Ryzen 3 2200G. With Windows installed, our Ryzen 3 2200G system is now a fully operational computer. However, you may wish to run Linux either instead of Windows or alongside Windows. And so in the next video, I'm going to be installing Linux Mint 19.1 on the machine, including showing you how to set up a dual boot. More information on this build can be found on explainingcomputers.com forward slash Ryzen. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.